beautiful. Thank you for joining me for a 75 minute yoga class that I'm calling Ghost Flow Yoga. We will follow the sequence of 26 and two yoga um, that add on optional, optional variations as well as sun salutes. This is in the lineage of Vishnu Ghosh, Bikram's teacher out of Calcutta, India. Um, so for those that don't know, 26 and two yoga comes out of Calcutta. Uh, Bikram's teacher is a guy named Vishnu Ghosh. I'm being really repetitive right now. Um, and Vishnu Ghosh had a sequence of 84 asanas that the 26 is taken from. We will do some of those 84 as well as some other um, more like vinyasa style variations of yoga poses. If at any point something does not feel right for your body, remember that you can modify a posture, you can do something else, or you can skip it entirely. This class is intended to be fun, 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 but you're not trying to like go to a point of pain or hurt yourself in any way. Speaking of pain, I might have <laughs> broken my pinky toe yesterday. I got up in the middle of the night to use the bathroom, ran into my door, my body went one day, my pinky toe went the other way. So um, I am practicing a little bit injured and I have not yet practiced with this injury. So um, there might be times where I need to skip a posture or, um, or modify something, but I will still talk you through it. Okay, on that note, we will start with two sets of pranayama, standing deep breathing, good for your lungs and respiratory system. Inhale through your nose, exhale through your mouth all the time, breathe deep against the back of your throat, your nose and your mouth are just a passageway, breathe as much as possible, as long as possible, as slow as possible, don't forget to have fun, bring your feet together, toes, heels touching nicely, interlock your 10 fingers, cross your thumbs, glue your knuckles underneath your chin, rock your weight into your heels, relax your shoulders down away from your ears, you made it to class, concentrate, meditate, and begin, inhale, chin down and arms up, breathe in through your nose, lift your elbows up, Suck your stomach in, fill up your lungs. Exhale, head up, exhale through your mouth, slowly push your head back, reach your arms forward, keep exhaling, elbows touch. Inhale, elbows out and arms up, slowly bring your chin down, look straight ahead, lift your elbows all the way up, breathe deep, full lungs. Exhale, head up, slowly push your head back, look way, way, way back for the wall behind you, arms forward, elbows touch, pointing forward. Inhale, head down, breathe in through your nose, down through your throat to the very bottom of your lungs. Exhale, head up as you exhale, open your mouth wide, like you're fogging up a mirror on the ceiling, arms forward, elbows touch. Inhale, head down, keep the weight in your heels, contract your gluteal muscles, squeeze your uh, quadriceps, lock your legs. Exhale, head up, weight stays in the heels, hips a little forward, hip muscles contracting, elbows touch. Inhale, head down. As you inhale, suck your stomach in. Depression to abdominal wall, contraction to abdominal muscles. Exhale, head up. Even as you exhale, stomach in, shoulders down, elbows up, triceps parallel to the floor. Inhale, every new inhale, you wanna take in more air than the last breath to expand your lung capacity. Exhale, head up. The more you exhale here, the more fresh oxygen you can take in on your next breath, push the air out. Inhale, head down. This is the last breath in the first set. Spine a little longer, elbows a little higher, lungs a little fuller. Suck your stomach in, breathe deep, full lungs. Exhale, head up, take your time. Eyes open, hips forward, legs locked, stomach in. Keep exhaling, push, squeeze, elbows touch, change. Arms down, you can roll out your shoulders and head, still getting warmed up at the top of class. Second set, feet together, interlock your fingers, switch the grip, other thumb, pinky finger on top, bring your knuckles underneath your chin like glue. Squeeze your thighs, squeeze your butt, stomach in, grow taller out of the base of your spine. Then begin, inhale, chin down and arms up, breathe in through your nose, lift your elbows up, suck your stomach in, fill up your lungs. Exhale, head up, exhale through your mouth, slowly push your head back, Reach your arms forward, keep exhaling, elbows touch. Inhale for one, two, three, four, five, six, full lungs. Exhale, head up, six, five, four, three, two, elbows touch, one. Inhale, head down, use the full six seconds to inhale, take in more and more and more air. Exhale, head up, use the full six seconds to exhale, Synchronize your breath with your body movements, elbows touch when your lungs are empty. Inhale, head down. So this breathing exercise builds heat from the inside out. Think of your throat as slightly constricted like a valve. Exhale, head up. So you're learning breath control. You're learning to breathe a little slower, 
a little longer, a little deeper, elbows touch. Inhale, head down. You're also working on your lung capacity, right? Long time yogis can have lung capacities like a free diver, fill up your lungs. Exhale, head up. And you're also working on neck and shoulder mobility. Just the head drops back. No backward bending, arms forward, elbows touch. Inhale, I'll do a few with you. Full lungs, exhale. Elbows touch, inhale. Elbows up, exhale. Lungs empty, inhale. Exhale. Inhale, two more. Exhale. Inhale, head down, last breath. Second set, deepest breath of your life. When your lungs are totally full, surprise yourself. Take in one more sip of air. Exhale, head up. Take your time, let everything go through the exhale breath. Any worries, any cares, let them go. Be here now, elbows touch, change, arms down. We'll continue our Chandrasana with Padastasana, half moon with hands to feet pose. We'll incorporate a little sun salute action into this too. I will talk you through all of it. Feet together, inhale your arms over your head sideways, palms together. Interlock your fingers, release your index fingers, cross your thumbs, nice tight grip. Stretch up out of your waist and bend right and left, right and left. Every time you pass through the middle, reach up a little taller like you're trying to touch the ceiling. And when you can't stretch anymore, come to stop in the middle. Bring the weight into your heels, push your hips a little forward, squeeze your palms together, head and arms back, touch your biceps to your ears, stomach in. Inhale, breathing, stretch up out of your waist, try to touch the ceiling. Exhale, breathing, absolutely straight lines, slowly bend your body to the right. Without bending your elbows, without bending your knees, continuously push your hips to the left beyond your flexibility. You're trying to create a tremendous stretching feeling in the left side of your body, all over, inside out, bones to skin, fingers to toes. Just remember it's the first posture of the day and there's no rush, nowhere you have to be, nothing you have to prove to yourself or to anyone else. All you have to do is breathe to your nose. If it feels good, use your breath to get a little deeper at the end. Inhale, lengthen the arms. Exhale, come down, push, push, push. Change, inhale to come up, stop in the middle. Hips forward, arms back, stomach in, stretch up, and slowly bend to the left, press your hips to the right. So you're stretching the right side body and toning the left side body, don't collapse. Lift your chin, lift your chest, and it's a very proud posture and you have a lot to be proud of for practicing yoga today. Keep the biceps with the ears, weight in the heels, almost like you could lean against a wall behind you. you. Can stay right here, get a little deeper at the end. Come down, push, push, push. Change, inhale to come up. First back bend of the day, I'll show you from the side. Take a deep breath, full lungs, keep your eyes open, relax your head back as far as it goes. You can give your head a gentle shake. Look for the floor behind you, squeeze your butt, lift your chest, and immediately bring your arms back with your ears. Try to touch the wall behind you. Full spine back bending from coccyx to the neck, lower back, middle back, upper back. Bend your total spine backward bending. Keep the weight in your heels. Lock your legs. Inhale, breathing. Push stomach, thighs, hips. Everything forward and bring your arms back. Look back, fall back, way back, go back, more back. Change. Inhale to come up. Big stretch up. Stomach in. Exhale, stomach in. Hold arms with ears, hands to the floor. Drop your head. Go for a walk. Move your hips. Shake your head. This is a U-turn from back bending to forward folding at the beginning of class. Your spine might not be quite warmed up yet. Move your hips to get your lower back nice, relaxed, comfortable, easy, flexible. Padastasana, hands to feet pose, bend your knees halfway. You can grab the backs of your calves, your Achilles, or your heels from underneath, step on all 10 fingers. Pull in your heels, roll your weight into your toes, and lift your hips up. Stretch your upper body down from the lower spine to the floor, pulling as the object of stretching. You're trying to create a tremendous stretching feeling on the back of your body, all over, inside out, bones to skin, fingers to toes with a smiling, happy face. It's kind of poetic. Keep pulling, keep stretching, keep breathing, roll forward, hips up, knees back. Change on your next inhale breath, lengthen into a halfway lift. You can have your hands on your thighs, your shins or the floor in front of you. We're going into a vinyasa. 
Exhale, bend your knees, put your hands on the floor and step back into a high plank or tabletop position. On your next exhale, hug your elbows in and lower down halfway. Inhale, push up into a back bend. You can do up dog with arms straight and thighs off the floor or cobra with elbows bent and thighs on the floor. Exhale, tuck your toes under, lift your hips up for down dog. You can bend one knee, straighten the other, pedal out your legs and then press your heels to the floor hips to the ceiling, drop your head, look for your thighs behind you. If down dog is not speaking to you, come onto your knees and take a child's pose instead. Sink your hips down as you reach your arms forward. On your next inhale, hands to the floor, look forward, step forward, lengthen into a halfway lift. Exhale, bend your knees and fold, relax your head. Inhale, chin away from your chest, arms in your ears, root to rise, lift up, look up. Exhale, arms down. Let's do that sequence again. Feet together, inhale, arms up, palms together. Switch the grip, interlock fingers, release index fingers, cross thumbs. Hips forward, arms back, stretch up, then slowly drop to the right, press your hips to the left. So this is how we start 26 into yoga. And in Gosha's yoga sequence, this is called a moon salute, right? We're making a crescent moon shape with our body. Press your hips to the left, stretch your upper body to the right, come down, push, push, push. Change, inhale to come up, hips forward, arms back, stretch up, and slowly drop to the left, press your hips to the right. So in yoga, right, most of us are familiar with sun salutes, but there's also moon salutes and salutes to the gods and goddesses in Gosh Flow Yoga or in Gosh Yoga. Keep the weight in your heels, right hip a little forward, two hips in line, left shoulder a little forward, two shoulders in line, come down, push, push, push. Change, inhale to come up, second heart opener. Keep your eyes open, relax your head back, Squeeze your butt, lift your chest, and take your arms back with your ears. So imagine you're saluting the moon here. So we have a the longest partial lunar eclipse in 560 or 580 years today. Pretty cool. At 4 a.m. today, the moon will be 97% eclipsed. It's also a full moon. Keep the weight in your heels, lock your legs, push your hips forward. Pretty remarkable. Arms back, look back, fall back, way back, go back, more back, change, inhale to come up, stretch, exhale, stomach and fold, hands to floor, drop your head, go for another walk, move your hips, shake your head, and second set, Padastasana, bend your knees halfway, you can grab the backs of your legs or your heels from underneath, pull on your heels, roll your weight into your toes, lift your hips up, push your knees back, try to lock your legs, roll forward a little bit more, hips up a little bit more, knees back a little bit more, pull, stretch, breathe, Change, going back into our vinyasa, inhale, lengthen into a halfway lift. Exhale, bend your knees, put your hands on the floor and step back into a plank or tabletop position. And let's hold here for a moment. If the chaturanga in which you lower down and then do a back bend does not feel good for your body, you can skip it. You can go straight from your plank or tabletop directly into your down dog or child's pose. Or while we do that chaturanga, you can take a cat and cow. Otherwise, hug your elbows in and imagine you're pulling yourself down to the floor. Inhale, come up into a back bend, chest up, shoulders back. Exhale, tuck your toes under, lift your hips up for down dog or sink your hips down for child's pose. Either way, make your arms long, spread your fingers wide and root down through all 28 knuckles and the space between your index finger and thumb so that if you are doing down dog, you're not putting all of your body weight in your wrists. Inhale, look forward, step forward, lengthen halfway. Exhale, fold. Inhale, arms of your ears lift up with a flat back. Exhale, arms down. We'll do that one more time a little bit faster. Feet together, arms up, palms together. This time, only cross your thumbs, keep the fingers interlaced. Hips forward, arms back, stomach in, stretch up, and slowly drop to the right for, whoop, for five, sorry, four, three, two, one. Change, inhale to come up, stop in the middle, hips forward, arms back, stretch up for five, four, I don't know who that is, three, two, one, change, come on up, first, uh, third back bend, keep your eyes open, drop your head back and go back. Change, inhale to come up, stretch up, exhale, hold, right away, grab the backs of your legs or your heels from behind, pull on your heels, roll your weight into your toes, lift your hips up, push your knees back, lock your knees, lock your knees, lock your knees. Change, inhale, lengthen, halfway lift. Exhale, hands to the floor, step back into your plank or tabletop position. Keep exhaling, lower down. Inhale into your back bend. Exhale into your down dog or child's pose. And at the beginning of class, we're gonna be doing a lot of these. Um, and you can switch it up, right? Maybe one time you do down dog, one time you do child's pose. 
right? So Yogi's choice here, heels down, hips up. Inhale, look forward, you can step or try floating forward. I'm not gonna do it today, but you can try floating forward to land with your feet between your hands. Look forward, exhale, hold. Inhale, reach your eyes, look up. Exhale, arms down. Beautiful, let's continue. Awkward Utkatasana, step your right foot to the right, about six inches, hip width distance, insides of your feet parallel like 11s. Arms up, parallel to the floor, tricep muscles tight. All five fingers together, thumbs with your index fingers, nothing loose or hanging. Reach your arms forward, pull your abdomen in, bend your knees, sit back and down into a chair. Feet flat position, spine straight to begin with, 100% of your body weight in your heels, sit down, Halfway only, hips into a chair. Suck your stomach in and lean your upper body back. Lift your chin up, chest up, change. Come on up, keep your arms there. Push your hips forward, spread your toes wide. Come up maximum on your tippy tippy toes like a ballerina. <laughs> Stretch all the way up, bend your knees and sit down. Lean back, touch your head and hips to a wall behind you. Heels a little higher, knees a little higher. Sit down into a chair, but don't sit below a chair. Change, last part, come on up, still breathing. Squeeze your knees together. Keep the insides of your feet parallel. Lift your heels a little off the floor and slowly sit down. The slower you do, the more strength and control you build. Squeeze your knees together and forward, thighs parallel to the floor, arms parallel to the thighs, spine perfectly straight. From the side, looks like you're holding a box. Change, slowly come up, knees together. Good, heels down, right foot back, arms down, optional sun salute, inhale, arms up. Exhale, fold. Inhale, lengthen. Listen carefully. You can try floating back. I'm not going to do it. If you're familiar with floating back, try it. Go for it. Hop back, but you want to land with your elbows bent rather than your arms straight. Otherwise, keep exhaling lower down. Inhale into your cobra or up dog. Exhale into your down dog or child's pose. Good. Inhale, look forward, step or float forward, lengthen halfway. Exhale, hold. Inhale, arms with your ears lift up. Exhale, arms down. Good, okay, second set awkward, a little bit different if you want. Step your right foot to the right hip with distance. Bring your hands uh, together in prayer this time. Pull your abdomen in, bend your knees, sit back and down. And all of these are just optional variations just for fun. Option to stay here or take your left elbow outside of right knee and twist, look up towards the ceiling, bring your right arm up to the ceiling, left arm down towards your ankle, move your hips a little to the left, roll your right rib cage back. Good, bring your hands back together at heart center, unwind other side, keep your hips low, take right elbow outside of left knee, push elbow into knee, try to get your thumbs at the sternum. From here, look up, you can bring left arm up, Right arm down at six and 12 o'clock, move your hips a little to the right, and then right shoulder forward, open your chest like a flower petal blooming. Good, hands back together, unwind and change. Come on up, you can keep your hands in prayer, lift your heels, stretch up and sit down. In the second set, if you'd like, you can fold forward, might help you sit down more, and then take your arms back, squeeze your shoulder blade together. Imagine you're gonna press your palms together like you're holding a volleyball. Heels a little higher, sit down. Change, keep your heels lifted, balance challenge, bring your arms up parallel to the floor, triceps tight, heels stay up. Squeeze your knees together and slowly sit down. Good, squeeze your knees together and forward, keep the triceps tight, fingertips active, and arms parallel to the floor. If you have healthy knees and you wanna test balance and control, you can come up one inch and hold. Come up one inch and hold and change, slowly push the floor away from you, good. Heels down, right foot back, arms down, optional sun salute, inhale, arms up, exhale, fold. Inhale, lengthen. You can step or float back. If you're floating back, remember to land with your elbows bent, otherwise keep exhaling, lower down. Inhale, your up dog or cobra. Exhale, your down dog or child's pose. If you're doing down dog and your heels do not naturally touch the floor, you can take a wider stance. If you have tight hamstrings, you can micro bend your knees to take weight away from the backs of the legs. Otherwise, press your thighs back, heels down, hips up, make a V shape with your body. Inhale, look, step, or float forward, lengthen halfway. Exhale, fold. Inhale, reach your eyes, lift up. Exhale, swing your right arm under your left arm. We're going into Garudasana Eagle Pose. 
palms together, thumbs towards your nose, pull your elbows down, bend your knees, sit down, stay down there, lean back and bring your right leg over your left leg, cross your legs each other, twist like ropes, eventually wrap your right foot behind your left calf muscle. If your foot is coming out, sit down more. If you're losing your balance, arch your upper body back. Bring your knees to the right, upper body to the left, twist like ropes, sit down, upper body back at the end. Good, change feet together, arms up. Let's do the left side. Swing your left arm under your right arm, palms together, thumbs towards your face, pull your elbows down, stomach in, sit down, lean back and bring left leg over right leg. Cross, twist, wrap, breathe and squeeze. Knees a little to the left, upper body to the right, wrists, elbows, knees, ankles, all in one line. Sit down one more inch, pull the elbows down, upper body back. Good, change feet together, inhale, arms up. Exhale, fold, inhale, lengthen. Exhale, step or float back, keep exhaling, lower down. Inhale, your up dog, your cobra. Exhale, your down dog, your child pose. Take a breath here. You can use that ujjayi breathing that you practice in pranayama, but it's in and out through the nose. So when you breathe with your throat slightly constricted, start to build and generate a lot of heat in the body. Inhale, look forward, step or float forward, lengthen. Exhale, fold. Inhale, reach your eyes, lift up, look up. Second set, Garudasana, arms and legs at once. Exhale, right arm under left arm, right leg over left leg. So right under, right over, send red rover over. Left hip a little forward, right shoulder a little forward. Push the top leg into the bottom leg. Pull the elbows down, sit down more, stomach in more, upper body back. Good, change feet together, arms up, showing you last one from the side. Left side at once, left arm under right arm, left leg over right leg. Right hip a little forward, left shoulder a little forward. Pal press the palms together, flatten the palms, straighten the wrist, pull the elbows down, sit down more, bring your upper body back. Good, change feet together, inhale, arms up. Exhale, fold, I'm gonna show you a half sun salute. Exhale, fold forward, so inhale, lengthen, halfway. Exhale, fold, again, this is a half sun salute. Inhale, arms with your ears, hands together, lift up, look up. Exhale, arms down. One more half sun salute. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, fold. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, fold. Inhale, arms with your ears, reach your eyes, lift up, look up. Exhale, arms down. Party time. You can grab a sip of water if you want. Um, where is my water? <laughs> And those half sun salutes that I just showed you are really wonderful uh, alternatives to a full sun salute, especially if you have like a wrist, elbow, or shoulder injury, right? You just skip all the like stuff that puts weight in the upper body. You can usually do like two half sun salutes while other folks are doing full sun salutes. Again, lots of options within sun salutes, lots of options alternative to sun salutes, or you can just take a breath and grab a sip of water while the rest of us vinyasa. Okay. Right, we're doing good on time. Okay. Next, we're going to balance on one leg. How great is that? This is the cardiovascular part of class. And in this class, we're going to flow standing head to knee to standing bow, because why not? Shift your weight to your left leg, lock your left leg, lift your right leg up, flex your toes back, round down, pick up your right foot. All 10 fingers interlocked, webbing to webbing grip. From start to finish, standing legs should be solid concrete, one piece, lamp post, unbroken, you have no knee. If you know your left leg is locked, no bend, no wobble, inhale slowly, gently, lift your right leg up. Stretch it forward until your right leg is exactly parallel to the floor. If both legs lock, then bend your elbows down. Touch your elbows to your calf muscles one day, elbows go below the calf muscles, lock your knee, lock your knee, lock your knee, change, slowly reverse out, keep the right leg bent, lift your chest up, Point your right toes, bring your knees together. Standing bow pulling pose. Bring your right hand up, out to the right, reach back, pick up the inside of your right foot, half the ankle bone, thumb with your index finger, bring your left arm up and back with your ear. Lock your left leg, point your right toes, lift your chin, take a breath, stretch up, and slowly charge your body forward. Simultaneously, kick your right leg back and up. Take your time. Slowly bring the body down and the leg up. See the foot come directly over the top of your head, so from the side, two heels in line. 
kick back and up. In other words, two shoulders in line. Touch your chin to your shoulder, shoulder blade scapula stretching away from the body. Kicking and stretching should be equal, simultaneous, 50-50. The harder you kick, you can balance forever. Body down more, leg up more. Kick, kick, kick. Good, change. Kick yourself up with control. Feet together, arms down. Fun stuff. Shift your weight to your right leg. I don't know about you, but by the end of that, my calf starts to cramp. So next, other side, standing bow. Shift your weight to your right leg, lock your right leg. Lift your leg up, flex your toes back. So you're already stretching your calf and Achilles. As you're ready, round down and pick up your left foot. All 10 fingers are locked. Contract your inner thigh, outer thigh. Lift your kneecap, squeeze gluteus maximus and minimus. And when you're ready, slowly lift your left leg up. So real kick your heel forward, flex all five toes back towards your face from the ankle. You're training your Achilles to stretch. If both legs lock, you feel tremendous stretching feeling on the backs of both legs, maybe even a cramp on both thighs. Then bend elbows in and down, roll the shoulders back and down. Try to get your elbows to go below the calf muscles, hold at your deepest point. Good, straighten your arms, bend the left leg, lift your chest, point your toes, bring your knees together. Left hand up, out to the left, reach back, pick up the inside of your left foot, take your right arm up and back, bicep with your knees together. Lock your right leg, point your left toes, lift your chin, stretch up, and slowly kick into your hand. Simultaneously charge your body forward. Whew, this side might feel different from the other side, it certainly does for me. We often have one leg that's a little bit easier to balance on or one side of our body that's maybe a little bit more open and flexible. You might know why that is, like what side of your body you carry a purse on or how you sit at work, or you might've had no idea until now that mm, my left hip is really tight today, that's okay. Slide the right shoulder forward, left shoulder back, body down, leg up, kick, kick, kick. Good, change, press yourself up. Feet together, arms down, take a soothing breath, slow down. Second set, shift your weight to your left leg, lock your left leg, lift your right leg up, flex your toes back, round down, pick up your right foot, all 10 fingers are locked. Concentrate, meditate, don't forget to have fun. Inhale, lift your right leg up. If both legs lock, bend elbows down. If elbows go below calf muscles, slowly tuck your chin to your chest, put your forehead on your knee, and if this is easy, start to let go of your foot. And one day using your hip flexor strength, leg stays in place. Good, change, head up, arms straight, bend the right leg, lift your chest, point your toes, knees together. We're gonna do arms at once, left arm up, right arm back, square off your hips, lock your left leg, point your right toes, lift your chin, stretch up and slowly kick, stretch, breathe. So in standing head to knee, which we just did, we rounded our spine, we compressed our abdomen, we kept our hips and shoulders in line, and we flexed our kicking foot. In standing bow, what we're doing now, we're bending our spine, we're stretching our chest, we're sliding the shoulders apart, and we're pointing the, um, stand the, the kicking foot. These are uh, complementary postures, body down, leg up, kick, 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 good, change, press yourself up. And then both of them, right, the standing leg remains super strong. Shift your weight to your right leg, lock your right leg, lift your left leg up, toes back, round down, pick up your foot, all 10 fingers are locked. Ooh, this is the one with the pinky toe, here we go, lock your right leg, flex your toes back, inhale, lift your left leg up. Evenly distribute your body weight on both feet on your right foot without grabbing the floor of your toes. If both legs lock, then elbows down, and then when you're ready, tuck your chin to your chest, put your forehead on your knee, and if it feels good, maybe even let go of your foot. When you're ready, bring your head up, arms straight, bend the left leg, lift your chest, point your toes, knees together, let's do both arms at once, left arm back and down, right arm up and back. So you're already sli uh, sliding your shoulders apart. Lock your right leg, point your left toes, Lift your chin, take a breath, stretch up, and slowly kick, stretch, breathe, 30 seconds. Halfway, start to come down if you haven't already. Best way to fall is forward.
body down, leg up, kick, kick, kick. Change, pick yourself up, good for you. Come to the back of your mat, Tula Dandasana, balancing stick, feet together, inhale, arms up, palms together, interlock fingers, release index fingers, cross thumbs, lean back, stretch up. Step your right foot forward, and shift your weight to your right leg, stretch, and when you're ready, come down like a slow moving seesaw. Arms, body, head, legs, everything parallel to the floor, so from the side. Body makes a T like Tom, not a broken umbrella. Stretch, stretch, stretch. Good, change left foot down, right foot back, stomach in, stretch up. Step your left foot forward, shift your weight to your left foot, stretch and tilt. Keep the back flat. Stomach in, hips and armpits face the floor, chest down, chin forward, leg up. Good, change right foot down, left foot back, arms down. You can do a second set of balancing stick. You can also keep going in your balancing stick so that the body comes down and the big toe comes up to the ceiling. It's a standing splits posture called split arm. Let's try it. Feet together, inhale, arms up, palms together, only cross your thumbs. Exhale, step your right foot forward, a big step. Lock both legs, stretch and tilt. So you go into balancing stick and then you just keep coming down. Split your arms apart. That's why it's called split arm. It's not very creative. Bring your arms up and back like a beautiful swan. Lift your left big toe all the way up to the ceiling. One day in the standing splits, keep your chin and chest forward. Good, change left foot down, right foot back, stretch up. Step your left foot forward, lock both legs, stretch and tilt. So you want to go in and out of this slowly with control, which I'm not demonstrating well today, slowly with control. Bring your stomach to thigh, but keep your chin and chest away from your legs. You do a back bend here, body down, leg up, leg up, leg up. Change, right foot down, left foot back, optional sun salute, inhale, look up. Exhale, fold, inhale, lengthen. Exhale, step or float back, keep exhaling, lower down. Inhale into your back bend. Exhale into your down dog or child's pose. Let's take three slow breaths here. Inhale, look forward, step or float forward, lengthen. Exhale, fold. Inhale, reach your eyes, lift up, look up. Exhale, step your right foot to the right, nice big step. Arms down parallel to the floor. If you want to adjust which way you are stepping, feel free. You can turn your toes in, heels out. Lock your legs, lift your chest. Let's one leg forward. Look forward all the way down. Catch your breath. Grab your heels from behind. You can also grab your pinky toes or put your hands on the floor in front of you. Pull on your heels, roll your weight into your toes. Lift your hips up, push your knees back, lock your knees, pull, stretch, breathe. Touch your head to the floor in between your feet. On your next inhale, release the grip from your hands. Put your hands on, release the grip from your heels. Put your hands on the floor and look forward, lengthen halfway. From here, you're gonna heel toe your feet closer together. Turn your heels in and your toes out so that your feet make a V. Depending on your body proportions, you can have anywhere from one feet to a whole yardstick in between your heels. So don't be afraid to play around. Toes in, heels out, start to bend your knees and sit down. So for my body proportions, a smaller step actually helps me sit down, but for you, you might want a bigger step. So just keep that in mind. It's very natural at first to have the heels way off the floor. You can lean forward. As you're ready, slowly the heels are gonna come down. If your heels are on the floor, you can bring your hands together at heart center, press the elbows into the knees, lift the chest. This is how a lot of the world um, sits, eats, hangs out, uh, plays scraps by you know the edge of the road. It's how a lot of the world uses the bathroom, but it's like very limited percentage of Americans can do this this motion with the hips. And it's something that like if you do for a minute or two every day when you're watching TV or whatever it is, right? This will help um, with your hips. Uh, it'll help lengthen the spine. It's obviously good for knee mobility as well. If you're a person that menstruates, this is good for uh, menstrual flow. It's also good for digestion. And if you ever find yourself in a foreign country having to use the bathroom like this, it's really helpful too. Okay, from here, you're gonna put your hands on the floor in front of you, lift your hips up, turn your heels back out, toes in, take a bigger step. 
Bring your arms out to parallel, change, slowly come up, triangle, trikonasana, press your hips forward, lean your upper body back, turn your right foot out, left toes in, two heels in line, inhale, bend your right leg lunge. You can always take a bigger or smaller step if it helps you to sit down. Lean back and move your arms at the same time. Elbow in front of the knee, aim your fingertips between your big and second toe. Don't touch the floor, don't push any weight on the floor. Look up to the ceiling, touch your chin to your shoulder, reach your left arm up, stretch your right arm down, pull your abdomen in, sink your left hip down, push your right knee back, turn and twist, lock your left leg, keep your left foot flat on the floor. Change, rotate your arms, straighten your right leg, right toes in, left toes out, two heels in line. Inhale, bend your left leg and lunge. Sit as low as you can, never forcing the body. Sit down, lean back, and move your arms, elbow in front of the knee. Hover your fingertips between your big and second toe, never quite touching. Look up, stretch up, breathe. Push your right hip forward and down, stomach in. Push your left knee back with the help of your elbow, chest up. Now roll the right rib cage back, open your chest like a flower petal blooming. Lock your right leg, keep your right foot flat on the floor. Change, rotate your arms, straighten your left leg, turn your left toes in right toes out, keep your right leg straight. Second set triangle, tilt to the right and start to move your arms. At first you can have your right hand on your knee, your shin, your ankle, eventually fingertips to the floor in front of you, reach your left arm up, look up and stretch up. This is um, another version of triangle pose that a lot of other styles of yoga utilize. Our version of triangle is unique to, to Bikram yoga. Um, this is a really nice way to stretch out the neck and of course it's a great inner hamstring thigh stretch. Option to stay here or float a bird of paradise. Bend your right knee again. Take your right hand in between your legs like you're trying to pat your own butt. Reach your left hand behind you. See, there's practical applications to these postures. Reach your hands behind you, clasp your hands together, and awkwardly walk your feet back together. The more you do it, the easier it is. Shift your weight to your left leg and lift up. It doesn't get easier, you get better. If you can lift all the way up, point your right toes and kick up bird of paradise. Yes, you've got it. Good. Bend your right leg. Take your right foot back to the floor. Take a wider step. Undo the clasp. Straighten your right leg. Arms at six and 12. Change. Rotate your arms. Turn your right toes in. Left toes out. Lean to the left and bring your right arm up. Left arm down. Eventually fingertips on the floor in front of uh, your left foot. Stretch the crown of your head to the left. Look up. Reach your right arm up. Breathe. Option to stay here or try bird of paradise. Bend your left leg, might be different on this side. Take your left hand behind you, reach behind you, clasp hands together for a bind. Walk your feet back together, try to touch your heels together. Shift your weight to your right leg and lift up. And then from here, point your left toes and try to lock both legs, hips forward, chest back. Looking good, lock it off. When you're ready, bend your left leg, put your left foot on the floor. Take a bigger step, undo the bind, left fingertips to the floor, right arm up, straighten your left leg, change, move your arms, turn your left toes in, bring your arms up, palms together, cross your thumbs, standing separate leg, head to knee, Dandayamana, Pikathapada, Janu Sharasana, shift your weight to your heels, pick up your toes, pivot on your heels, turn your back toes in, squeeze your left butt, push your left hip forward, one, two, three, four, five times, stretch up, tuck your chin to your chest, and go down. Round scoop, curl, tuck, concave, chin to chest, stomach in, touch your exactly forehead and knee together, front side compression, throat choked, eyes open, breathing normal. So you're squeezing, compressing the abdominal wall as you round and stretch your back. Start to walk your hands back together, working on your balance. Right hip up, left hip forward, two hips in line. Push your forehead into your knee, lift your kneecaps, lock your legs, hands together. Change slowly on curl, vertebra by vertebra, disc by disc, at a blast. Shift your weight to your heels, pick up your toes, pivot to the other side of the room, uncross your heels, turn your back toes in, squeeze your right glute, push your right forward, 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 stretch up, tuck your chin to your chest, go down. Can you look at your belly button all the way down? You can't see your front foot all the way down, chin to chest, stomach in, bend your front leg if you need to. Touch your forehead to your knee. Squeeze and compress the abdominal wall. Round and stretch the spine. Every time you exhale, pull the abdomen in more. Push your forehead into your knee. Lock your legs, hands together. Change. Imagine you're dragging your forehead 
up your thigh, your chest, head up, last. When you're ready, pivot on your heels, face forward. Option to keep your arms up like this for the second set or take your arms behind you. At first, maybe just holding hands, but eventually you can bring your hands in prayer, maybe even palms touch, and eventually you could slide your uh, fingertips up. Okay, pick up your toes, pivot on your heels. So now it's really a balance challenge, right? Turn your back toes in, push your left hip forward, stretch up, this time chin away from your chest, fold forward with a flat back straight spine, this is pyramid pose. Stomach to thighs, chest to knee, chin to shin, nice flat back. Option to stay here or interlock fingers, release index fingers, cross thumbs, lift your index fingers up and forward for a shoulder rinse. It helps with balance to keep the weight in the right foot. Good. If your hands are lifted, bring your hands back to the lower back in prayer, chin away from your chest, change, push the right foot down, press your hips forward, chin away from your chest as you lift. Pick up your toes and pivot. I'm going to face you. Um, so the trick to balance is to keep the foot in the left foot, I think to keep the weight in the left foot, and also heels are in line, but they're not like perfectly crisscross. Turn your back toes in, right hip forward, lift your chin and chest and go down. Almost imagine you're going to arch your spine, stick your butt out a little bit, Stomach to thigh, chest to knee, chin to chin. Option to stay here or interlock fingers, release index fingers, cross thumbs, lift your arms up and forward. Imagine one day index fingers could touch the floor in front of your big toes, just like head to knee pose. I've seen it done. It could be you. Great, bring your hands back to the lower back, chin away from your chest, stomach in, change. Push your left heel into the floor as you lift up. Beautiful, pivot on your heels, right foot back, arms down, second to last sun salute. Here we go. Inhale, arms up, salute the sun. Exhale, fold. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, you can step or float back. Keep exhaling, lower down. Inhale, your up dog or cobra. Exhale, your down dog or child's pose. Take a breath. Slow inhale through the nose. Slow exhale through the nose. Inhale, look forward, step forward, lengthen. Exhale, fold. Inhale, arms will be ears, lift up. Exhale, arms down. Beautiful, come to the middle of your mat for our hip opening series. We will flow tree pose to toe stand with some fun variations. Shift your weight to your left leg, walk your left leg, lift your right leg up, heel to costume, let your right knee drop. You can bring one or both hands together. If you'd like to try a half bind, because this is half lotus pose, you can take your right hand out to the right, palm faces the wall behind you, reach behind you, and eventually catch your right big toe with your right hand. Option to stay here, bring your hands back together in prayer, fold forward. Hands to floor, lean forward, bend your knees, sit down on your heel, walk your hands back to either sides of your hips, stretch the crown of your head up to the ceiling, and bring one or both hands together, elbows down, spine straight, come a half inch off your heel, and if this is easy, try sliding your right foot forward and then eventually pull it back. <laughs> kind of cheated on that one. I used a little momentum. Okay, when you're ready, put your hands on the floor, lift your hips up, straighten your standing leg, <laughs> and then push your hips forward to come out and also come up on two feet. Nice change, right? Like down, shift your weight to your right leg, lock your right leg, lift your left leg up, yield a costume, let your left knee drop, you can bring one or both hands together. You can try reaching behind you, eventually clasping uh, left big toe with left hand. Try to even out the hips. You can stay here or start to fold forward. I'm going to stay here because I'm a toes, but you can keep walking your hands forward, lean forward, lift your heel, bend your knees, sit down on your heel. Walk your hands back, bring left and hand up, elbows down, spine straight if you'd like. Point your left toes, kick forward. Good, pull it back in. You got it. Whenever you're ready, put your hands on the floor, lift your hips up to straighten your standing leg, and then press your hips forward to reverse out. Very nice change. Left leg down, honor yourself. Give yourself high five, fist bump. Oh, wait, don't do that. I mean, do that, but in a second. Last sun salute. Here we go. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, fold. Inhale, lengthen. This is your victory lap. Exhale, hands to floor. Step back, lower down. Inhale your up dog or cobra. Exhale down dog or child's pose. Last one, take a slow inhale through your nose. And a slow exhale through your nose. 
Breathe in. Breathe out. Inhale, look forward. You can step or float forward, lengthen. Exhale, fold. Inhale, reach your eyes. Exhale, arms down. Okay, now high five, fist bump, turn around, Savasana. I forget that more than I should. Head to the front of your mat, feet to the back of your mat, muscle memory. Whee! We are on the floor for the rest of us. Okay. Bring your heels together. Let your toes fall open. Arms down by your sides, palms face the ceiling. Eyes open, mouth closed, breathing normal. Savasana is a gas station. Let it fill you up. When you lie still with your limbs close together, your body does not have to work very hard to pump fresh blood and oxygen to the body. It's a truly restorative posture. So yoga theoretically incorporates um, balance and strength 50-50. However, in like a 2021, very westernized version of yoga, a lot of times we overvalue flexibility. Um, and I, you know, I've been a benefactor of that, right? I'm naturally flexible. And so sometimes it looks like, oh, she must have a really advanced uh, like <laughs> practice or whatever it is. But just as a reminder, in yoga, we want to work on both our strength and our flexibility. And balance often happens when we have the strength and flexibility. 50-50, that's when we're better able to balance. I, um, I've actually never broken a bone, so I'm not positive that I, that I broke my pinky toe, but a few years back, I was talking to another yoga teacher who's also really naturally flexible, and she told this story about as a kid getting a car door was like slammed into her hand, and she didn't break any bones, and she was like, you know, in retrospect, part of it's because I'm really flexible, and my hand just bent back, and then I was, you know, she like sprained her hand, but no bones were broken, right? Because there's a lot of like flexible cartilage and, and malleable joints in there. Um, and I've, I've thought about that. Of course, I'm a cautious Enneagram six, and that is part of why I have not broken bones. But also um, in retrospect, it might be that, you know, my pinky toe went another way and it still didn't break, right? So as a reminder, sometimes when you see folks practice yoga and they can do the standing splits, and the balance probably took time, the strength to hold it took time, but sometimes the flexibility, right, is maybe natural. Or conversely, if you see somebody hold crow pose, right, the strength is there maybe naturally. So the flexible people want to work on getting stronger, the strong people want to work on getting uh, more flexible, and we all meet in the middle and call it a day. Pavanadrutasana, when you're moving pose, bend your right leg up, interlock your 10 fingers, grab your right shin, nice tight, white knuckle grip. Pull your knee out to the right, down towards your shoulder, completely avoid your rib cage. Keep your head on the floor without lifting your head, look down the center line of your body, pull and squeeze. Change, right leg down, bend your left leg up, pull your knee out and down, push the pads of your fingers into the backs of your hands to strengthen your grip, look down, breathe. Change, left leg down, both legs lift up, grab your elbows, each other, give yourself a big hug for coming to class today. Squeeze your knees together and down, keep your head on the floor without lifting your head, tuck your chin in, puff your chest up, press your shins into your forearms eventually or in the future when the bone joint skeletal system has improved, the whole spine from coccyx to the neck will be flat on the floor. Change, arms down and eyes open. Wind removing pose is part of the hip opening series, just like tree pose and toe stand. In the second set, we can do some other fun hip opening postures if you would like. Starting with supine figure four, bend your legs so that your feet are on the floor, keep your left foot on the floor, cross your right ankle over your left thigh. From here, lift your left foot off the floor so that your thighs come in towards your abdomen. If you'd like, you can interlace your fingers behind your left thigh and pull down. This is a great side seat stretch. You're opening through your right hip and you're also stretching the sciatic nerve on the outer right leg that runs from the back to the foot. Um, if you have sciatica or you know someone who has it, this is your posture. Change left foot down, right foot down. Keep your right foot on the floor. This time cross your left ankle shin over your right thigh, just below the knee. Lift your right foot off the floor, hover, uh, and then interlace your fingers behind your right thigh. So this is called figure four because if you look down, you'll notice that your legs make a four shape. And not super creative, but a very effective posture. Change, right leg down, left leg down, happy baby. Lift both legs up, bend your knees, flex your toes, open your knees and feet. See if you can grab the outsides of your feet with your hands. So I like to catch my feet from the outside, but have my elbows insides my knees. 
From here, you can rock back and forth, side to side, roll out the back. Maybe as you roll to the right, you can straighten your right leg and then come back to center. As you roll to the left, you can straighten your left leg. And if you've ever hung out with a baby, you probably know why this is called happy baby because babies love to do this. As you're ready, you're gonna stop in the middle and then pull down, keep the toes flexed back. If, um, if the yoga squat that we did earlier, it's called garland pose or malasana, if that posture is difficult for you, this is a really nice um, inter intermediary posture. If you, you know, if you look at what your feet are doing, you're doing the same thing as the yoga squat. It's just you're on your back rather than your feet. So again, if that one's challenging, do this for a minute or two every day. And then over time, you're going to build up to your uh, malasana pose. Change, arms and legs down. Next, we do a straight leg sit up. If you have any concerns about your back, skip the sit up, roll off to the side, knee this on your stomach. Otherwise, legs together, arms over your head, tuck your chin to your chest, sit up. Stay in this sit up for a while, elbow to floor, forehead to knees, just hold and enjoy the stretch. <sighs> okay, good. And then turn line your abdomen for the spine strengthening series, starting with Cobra, Bouge, and Gasana, good for your lower lumbar spine. We're gonna flow all four postures back to back to back to back to back. I'll walk us through it. Chin forward, place your hands on the floor just below your shoulders so your elbows point up. Zip up your legs like a cobra's tail, toes and heels touch. Lock your legs, squeeze your butt, look up and lift. Stretch your upper body off the floor. Use 100% back strength, very nice. Come up halfway only. Elbows stay bent, they make an L and 90 degree angle. Roll your shoulders back and down. Stretch your elbows towards your hip bones. Don't forget about your cobra's tail. Keep your feet together, toes, heels, touch, lock your legs, squeeze your butt, push your feet, hips, and hands down. Look up, chin up, chest up, stretch up, breathe up. Good, and change, slowly lower down. Keep your chin forward, arm straight position. Rotate your arms to face the floor. Bring your arms underneath you as best you can for locust shalabhasana. Spread your fingers wide. Lock your right leg, point your right toes, and lift your right leg up to a 45 degree angle, half of 90. See the foot come over the top of your head. Roll forward, shoulders down, heel up. Change slowly, right leg down. Relax right leg, lock left leg, point left toes, and lift your left leg up. Keep your hip and forearm in contact. Press down to your knuckles. You're stretching out the tendons and ligaments in your arms and hands as you lengthen and lift. Change, left leg down. Grand finale, tuck your chin and knock down. Bring your arms a little closer underneath you. Spread your fingers wide. Zip up your legs, toes, heels, touch. Lock your legs, squeeze your back, point your toes, roll forward and lift both legs up. Come up, everybody come up, struggle a little harder, don't give up. Mouth down, shoulders down, squeeze your butt, lock your legs, lift your thighs up. Change, slowly lower down. Take your arms out to the side, like airplane wings, full locust, pranishala basana. Zip up your legs like a cobra's tail, toes and heels, touch. Lock your legs, squeeze your butt, point your toes, look up and fly. Arms, body, head, legs, everything lifts off the floor like a jumbo jet taking off. Just your hip bones on the floor, the rest of your body is in the air. Relax your face, look up to the ceiling where your eyes go. Body moves to follow, keep your feet together, toes, heels touch, triceps tight. Reach your arms apart, lock your legs, point your toes, thighs up, chin up, chest up, look up, come up a little higher at the end. Good, change, slowly lower down. Last one in the sequence, here we go. Dhanurasana, floor bow, chin forward. Bend your legs, grab your feet from the outside. Round the outside, round the outside, all five fingers together, thumbs with your index fingers, start with your knees, feet close together, make up your mind. Point your toes, squeeze your butt, look up, and kick into your hands. Continuously keep kicking without stopping, without intermission, it's the kick that drives the posture. Something interesting is happening for me right here. My left knee is hurting, which I take as a sign that I was favoring my right toe. It's interesting, sometimes when you have an ache or a pain in the body, it might not actually be the injury. It might be the thing that's been compensating for the injury. Point your toes, squeeze your butt, look up to the ceiling, kick, kick, kick. Good, change, slowly lower down. Look to your right, left ear on your mat, arms down, palms face the ceiling, toes together, heels fall open. Send deep belly breaths in and out to your nose to massage the front of your body. Breathe deep into any point of tension. Let the floor hold you up. As you're ready, lift your head and look to the left right here on your mat. So we're working out the neck and shoulder. You are welcome to do um, the second set of that spine strengthening sequence, just as you did the first, or we can try some fun variations, starting with full cobra, 
Bring your chin forward, place your hands on the floor just below your shoulders, and then walk your hands back four more inches so your thumbs are in line with your lower ribs. Open your feet about mat width distance, keep your feet on the floor, lock your legs, squeeze your butt, point your toes, look forward, and lift your chin and chest. This is option one. Option two, see if you can straighten your arms. Now, when you straighten your arms, notice if your shoulders tense up and your hips come off the floor. Press your hips down, push the floor away from you so that the shoulders come out of the ears. Option three, drop your head back. Option four, squeeze your butt, point your toes, bend your legs, eventually toes and head touch. Good, bring your feet back down to the floor, slowly lower down. Locus, Shalabhasana, chin forward, arm straight position, rotate your arms, or bring your arms underneath you. Take a moment here, point your toes, Pardon me, flex your toes so that your big toes are tucked under. Lock your legs and practice pushing your big toes back and sliding forward. So I like to imagine that my arms are like train tracks and you're sliding your spine forward on the track. So that's eventually what this posture feels like when you're doing it, like you're really sliding forward. Okay, you can keep your toes tucked under, bend your knees, army crawl your knees until they touch your um, fingertips. <laughs> it's a big back bend, your butt is way up in the air. Keep your toes tucked under, left toes tucked under, straighten your right leg, point your right toes, and lift your right leg up. You'll notice that I can talk normally. You will feel more weight in your shoulders and chest, but right, the weight is not in your throat. Change, bend your right leg, right knee on the floor, lock your left leg, point your left toes, lift your left leg up. So you wanna feel the weight in the shoulders and chest. Eventually, this is what it feels like in the third part too. Change, left knee down, couple options. If you have any concerns about your neck or a tight neck, Tuck your chin in, keep your mouth down. Otherwise, you can try keeping your chin forward, working into um, cervical spine flexibility, neck spine flexibility. From here, in the second set, if you'd like, you can keep your legs locked with your feet apart and try to lift both legs up. You might find that with feet apart, um, you can lift up higher. Or if you'd like keeping your chin forward, you can try kicking all the way up to the ceiling. And this is always one where I'm like, I don't know if I can do it today but we can try mental strength as well as physical strength. Good, change, slowly lower down. Woohoo! Okay, bring your arms out to the side. Second set, full locus is just another fun way to get into that full cobra, but rather than using our arms, we're gonna use our spine strength to come up and back. So you're gonna try and keep your feet on the floor, mat with distance, and it's a little warm up. With your arms out parallel, you're gonna bring your arms forward a little bit more so they make a Y shape, and you're gonna see if you can clap up to the ceiling. I'll show you here. And eventually bring your hands back, so you can try clapping up. Okay, from here, if you'd like, you're gonna make a backstroke motion with both arms at once, like a butterfly stroke in reverse. You're going to bring your arms back, and if you can catch your knees, we'll go from there. Let's try it. Okay, if you can catch your knees, then you bend your legs head to toes. Good, feet back down, hands together, change. Ooh, slowly lower down. Full floor bow. Here we go. Chin forward, bend your legs, grab your feet from the outside. You can grab from the outside or walk your hands in and grab from the inside. Thumb between the big and second toe. Point your toes, squeeze your butt, look up and kick. Ooh, I feel this in my abdomen today. I should not have had eggplant farm an hour before class, but here we are. Um, option to stay here. <clears throat> option to stay here. That was a personal information note. Option to stay here, or you can try the shoulder rotate. I'm really embarrassed by that. Or you can try the shoulder rotation for floor, full floor bow. You're going to bend your left elbow out and forward, right elbow out and forward, drop your head back, eventually head and toes touch. If you are in full floor bow, release your left foot from your left hand, left hand forward, look forward, release right foot from right hand, right hand forward, and then slowly lower down. Everybody change, look to the right, left ear on your mat, take a breath. Lift your head, look to the left, right ear on your mat, right? So you strengthened your back a whole bunch, did a whole bunch of healing back compression, and you'll notice that back bends can be cardiovascular, right? Like my, my heart is a pump in. Okay, bring your chin forward, put your hands on the floor, push up, come to the top of your mat, perfect sperm. Sutta Vajrasana, start in tabletop position, point your toes back, 
As you're ready, walk your hands back and sink your hips down. We're gonna flow the next four postures just like we did in the spine strengthening series. This is called the fixed firm series. The tops of your feet, ankles, shins, and knees will be firmly fixed on the floor. Option to stay here or put your hands on your feet. Right elbow down, left elbow down, head back, head to floor, tuck your chin in, neck, shoulders on the floor, arms over your head, grab your elbows, each other, and hold. Wherever you are is perfect. You want a gentle stretch, never a point of pain. So in this posture, we're doing a back bend. Our feet are apart. Eventually our knees are together, but right, you can start with the knees apart. Change, put your hands on your feet, press yourself up. In the next posture, half tortoise, bring your knees, feet together, hips on your heels. Rather than doing a back bend, you're gonna stretch your spine. Arms up, palms together, chin away from your chest, stretch up and go down. And this should feel really good after all of the back bends we did, right? You're really lengthening the spine, reach your arms forward, sink your hips down, stretch, stretch, stretch. Good, change chin away from your chest, come up, lift your hips, open your knees and feet, camel will be strassen on another back bend, six inches between knees and feet, place your hands on your lower back, thumbs outside, fingers towards the floor, Press your hips forward, keep your eyes open, lift your nose and chin. And if it feels good, let your head drop back. Option to stay here or go back halfway. Option to stay here or right hand down, grab your right heel, left hand down, grab your left heel. Thumbs outside, fingers inside, full palm grip on your heels. When you're ready, put your hands on your back, press yourself up, head up last, stretch up. Now bring your knees, feet back together, sit down on your heels. You can see how the postures interact with each other. After that back bend, we're gonna go forward, grab your heels from the outside, stretch up, chin away from your chest, go down. So we went from spinal uh, compression to spinal extension to spinal compression. So now we're really grounding the spine, pull on your heels, don't lose the grip, lift your hips up. If there's a gap between your knees and head, you can walk your knees up one by one, but head stays in place, squeeze your heels together, Press your hips forward, lock your arms, lift your shoulders, round your back. Good, hips down to your heels, change slowly on curl. Head comes up last, very nice. Turn around, savasana. <laughs> I'm like out of breath. Bad yogi, take an inhale to your nose, exhale to your nose. So because we um, flow the sequences, right, there's less um, sit up. So if you're doing this sit up, really enjoy it. Elbows to floor, forehead to knees. And then in the second set, we'll do some fun, just like variations and fun stuff for the postures. If you want to, remember it's all optional. Legs together, arms over your head, chin to chest, sit up. Enjoy the stretch. Okay, come to the middle of your mat. Second set, half tortoise. Knees, feet together, hips on your heels, open your feet, sit down between your heels. Eventually, knees stay together, right? You can open the knees as well. Option to stay here or put your palms on your soles. Right elbow, left elbow, head back, head to floor, chin in, neck, shoulders on the floor, arms over your head. So if you get into this posture, like pretty much every time, you have healthy knees, healthy quads, um, and you'd like to get a deeper stretch to the knees and quads, you're going to keep your knees on the floor squeeze your glutes and lift your hips so that your butt comes off the floor but the knees and the hips stay down and then slowly lower down if that felt like too much don't do it again just hold otherwise squeeze your glutes lift your hips lower down squeeze your tush lift your pelvis up and lower down good change put your hands on your feet press yourself up knees feet together hips on your heels this time if you'd like open your knees and you can take a wide-legged child's pose Rather than arms overhead, you're gonna put your hands on the floor in front of you and walk yourself forward, forehead to floor. So in half tortoise, the palms are together and the arms are like super strong and active. In half, uh, in, in wide-legged child's pose, the uh, palms face the floor and the arms can relax a little bit more. We're also opening more to the inner thighs and hips. And this is a really grounding posture that if you don't have time for like a full yoga practice, but you're feeling a little anxious, just like drop to the floor and take one to five minutes in child's pose. It's a really nice way to reconnect to your breath and your body. 
Look forward, put your hands on the floor, press yourself up. Keep your knees apart and your big toes touching. Lift your hips. We're gonna go into our second set of camel and I'm gonna adjust my camera angle a little bit here. Okay. All right. So for a second set camel, you are welcome to put your hands on your back and go back like normal. Or if you'd like, you can try and take it into full camel and we'll do some drills. So the first one is hands at heart center. You're gonna look up towards the ceiling and try to high five the ceiling with your right hand, pull it back, flex your left fingertips back, left hand up, pull it back, both hands up, try to raise the roof like it's 1995. Okay, bring your hands back. And from here, we're gonna try high-fiving the wall behind us. So you'll drop your head all the way back, try to high-five the wall behind you so your fingers face the floor. Pull right hand back through the left hand, both hands so it's like you're playing patty cakes with the back wall. Patty cake, patty cake, baker's person. And if you want, you can go back all the way and touch your fingertips to the floor. Option to stay here or full camel, bend the elbows, try to touch your head to your toes. Eventually, ooh, grab your heels. Eventually, elbows touch. If you are in regular camel, put your hands on your back, press yourself up, come up. If you are in full camel, hands to the floor, straighten your arms, squeeze your butt more than you think you can. You're going to bring your hands together in prayer and lift yourself up. Good. And that's where the spine strengthening series back strength comes into play too. Okay, knees, feet together, hips on your heels, arms down. You can do a second set of rabbit, or you can try shoulder stand. If you're trying shoulder stand, you're going to come onto your back and find a place where there's nothing behind you, because eventually you're going to lift your, hip, your feet and hips up, and eventually your feet are going to touch behind your head. So if you're lying on your back, Make sure that there's some space behind your head. And if you're new to this, you're always welcome to watch because once we're in the postures, you don't want to be like twisting your head to look at me. And if you're watching on YouTube, you can just pause it and <laughs> go back, right? Bring your hands underneath you, palms face down, bend your knees so that your feet are on the floor, and then lift your feet off the floor so your feet are facing the ceiling. And from here, you're just going to practice rocking back and forth. So you'll press your hands and shoulders into the floor and lift your hips. And when you think you've got a good one, you're just going to keep going Whee! and eventually uh, toes touch the floor on the other side of your head. So if the toes are touching the floor, this is called plow pose. If your toes are not touching the floor, think about tucking your chin to your chest more and moving your hips back and forward. If your toes touch the floor, we can go into ear pressure pose, bend your knees so that eventually your knees squeeze either side of your ears. And if your feet are still on the floor, then grab your heels and pull down. So now it's an awful lot like rabbit pose, but you're on your neck and shoulders rather than your shins. If you're in ear pressure pose with a grip on your heels, bring your hands back down to the floor, straighten your legs back into plat. From here, we're going to go into shoulder stand. Bend your arms so that your hands are on your lower back, elbows are bent. Point your toes, squeeze your butt, lift your feet up towards the ceiling. You want to move your hips forward towards your head and your big toes up. So eventually ankle knees, hips, and line. So shoulder stand. If you're in shoulder stand, we're going to go back into plow. So lower your feet back to behind your head. Place your hands on the floor, palms face down. Core strength in our ear. Try to roll out vertebra by vertebra. So it took me a long time right, to do that. Sometimes we just kind of roll out, but eventually pressing the triceps down, slowly lower down. Once your hips are on the floor, keep that core strength, slowly lower your feet down. Mine ran into my couch. Okay, if you are, if you did all of that and you would like a, a counter stretch, I recommend doing fish pose after a shoulder stand or plow. So keep your hands underneath your butt, bend your elbows and then drop your head back, opening your throat. And if you're in fish pose, it's a little awkward to get out of it, but you're basically going to gently lift your head, tuck your chin to your chest, bring your arms up from underneath you, turn around, savasana. Take a breath, a well-deserved breath. In and out through the nose. Okay, legs together, arms over your head, finish strong, tuck your chin to your chest, sit up. Wonderful. Come to the middle of your mat and towel for the warm down series, beginning with Janu Shirasana head to knee pose. Sorry, I'm checking the time. Right leg out, left leg in, two legs. Make an L, a 90 degree angle, no wider. Inhale your arms over your head, big stretch up. Exhale, turn to your right chin to chest. Stretch your forehead to your knee. 
You can bend your right leg, interlock your 10 fingers up to the webbing under the ball of your foot, flex your toes back, bend your elbows down, eventually leg straight, eventually leg walk, eventually elbows to the floor, left elbow down, left shoulder down, roll into the left. Change, arms up, left leg out, right leg in, heel to costume, stretch up. Turn to your left, chin to chest. Interesting, chin to chest, touch your forehead to your knee. Of all of the postures, this is the one that hurts with my, with my right pinky toe on the floor. Who knew? If your leg is straight, flex your toes back, bend your elbows down, suck your stomach in, right knee down, right hip down, right shoulder down. Change, arms up, both legs out in front of you. If you're skipping, sit up, stay here. Otherwise, lay down and sit up. Hashimotanasana, stretching, bend your knees, hook onto your big toes, with peace sign fingers, middle and index fingers, thumbs on top. Scoot your butt back, right, left, right, left, 10 to 15 times. Knees can stay bent if it helps you keep a flat back. Your legs are straight, stick your butt out even more. Lock your legs, puff up your chest, fold forward. Stomach to thighs, pull, chest to knees, stretch. One day, toes and head touch. Good, change. Stay seated, spine twist. You're welcome to keep your left leg straight and cross your right heel over your left knee, or you can bend your left leg. Take your right hand close behind you like a second spine. Left arm up, bend over, push your knee out of the way, grab your left knee with your left hand, hand, heel, and knee. All touch in one magical spot. Inhale, stretch up, stomach in. Exhale, look over, right shoulder twist. You can keep your right hand close behind you for balance. You can also reach behind you, catch your left thigh with your right hand for a half spine, keep spine straight, chest up. Pull the abdomen in, keep your left knee down, right foot down, point your left toes. Inhale, stretch up, exhale, look back, twist, 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 twist. Hmm. Change, unwind, swap out your legs, bend your right leg on the floor, touch left heel to right knee, left arm behind you, right arm up, draw a circle over, push your knee out of the way, grab knee with hand, palm your knee, inhale, stretch up, exhale, look back, twist. You can keep your left hand behind you or reach behind you, do the half bind, catch your right thigh with your left hand, Feel each and every vertebrae twisting like beads in a necklace, stomach in, evenly distribute your body weight on both sit bones. Inhale, stretch up, exhale, look back, twist, twist, twist. Good, change, unwind, turn around, savasana. Still breathing, consciously breathing, breathing with intention. Legs together, arms over your head, chin to chest, sit up. Second set, upside down, world, same, same, but different. Right leg out wider, left leg in. So now it's more of an inner thigh stretch. From here, you can take your right hand outside of your right thigh and reach your left arm long overhead. Option to stay here or maybe put your forearm on your knee and come down more, or eventually you're gonna catch your big toe with one or both hands. Uh, roll the left rib cage back. You can look up, open your chest like a flower petal blooming. Try to keep your left hip, left knee on the floor. It's more of a side stretch. Good, change, come on up. Left leg out, right leg in. Again, you can have that leg wider than 90. Take your left hand out to the left, reach your right arm long overhead. Option to stay here or take forearm to thigh, coming down more. Option to stay here or really flex your toes back and see if you can catch your left big toe with one or both hands as you look up and breathe. Good, slowly come on up. Keep your left leg out, kick your right leg out. You don't have to have your legs quite as wide as mine, right? You can have them more like this, it's totally fine. The wider you open the legs, the more the inner thighs start to burn in a good way, right? Flex your toes back, suck your stomach in, stick your butt out a little bit and start to waddle your hands forward. Keep a flat back, straight spine, eventually forearms to floor, eventually chest to floor. Good, walk your hands back in, slowly come up. Spine twist, three options. Take your feet in front of you. You can keep your left leg straight, cross your right foot on top of your left thigh. This is half lotus, like our version of tree pose. You can see if you can crack, uh, words are hard. You can see if you can cross your left foot over your right thigh, this is lotus. And hey, your right foot can be a little closer to your knee. Same thing with the left foot, right? It doesn't have to be like quite as tight of a lotus as mine. Okay, this is option two. Option three, if lotus or half lotus does not feel good for your hips or knees, sit crisscross applesauce. Good, take your right hand behind you like a second spine. Left arm up, take left hand to right knee. Inhale, stretch up, stomach in. Exhale, look over right shoulder twist. You can keep your right hand behind you for balance. You can also reach behind you and eventually clasp your right big toe with your right hand for a half bind. Look back, twist. Good, 
and slowly unwind. If you're in lotus pose, stay here. In pretty much every version of lotus pose, the uh, right foot is on bottom. If you're in half lotus, work out both hips and knees equally. Take your left foot on top of your right thigh. And if you are sitting crisscross applesauce, do the most uncomfortable thing in the world. Sit reverse crisscross applesauce, very weird. You'll be back in your first grade classroom in no time. Take your left hand behind you, right arm up, right hand to left knee, inhale, stretch up, exhale, look back. It's weird how certain body movements, songs, right? Even a scent, like an odor memory can bring us back to a certain place or even sitting crisscross applesauce. You can keep your left hand behind you or catch your left big toe with your left hand, pull the abdomen in, look back, twist. Good, slowly unwind. If you're in lotus pose and you'd like to try bound lotus, take your right hand behind you, catch right big toe with right hand, left hand behind you, catch ooh, left big toe with left hand, right? And this is where our tree pose and our um, spine twist and 26 and two pose meet. If you do both of those well, eventually you get to this point. Change, unwind, turn around, savasana. So what, one of the things that I really like about 26 and two yoga it's a very fundamental beginner yoga practice, um, but at the same time, all of the elements are there to play around with some other really fun postures, which is cool. Legs together, arms over your head, chin to chest, sit up. Whee! Come to the middle of your mat, sit well. Hmm, I don't know how this is going to go. Knees, feet together, hips on your heels. Okay, you can do it. Sit on your, <laughs> you can also sit on your bed, crisscross applesauce. Um, first version of Kapalabhati, like we do in 26 and 2, you're going to exhale through your mouth as you pull your abdomen in. Lick your lips, swallow a couple times. Concentrate, meditate. Don't forget to have fun. Here we go. Five, four, three, two, one. So what Bikram calls Kapalbhati, most other styles of yoga would call like a version of the streak of breathing. There's lots of different pranayamas, breathing exercises. When other styles of yoga do kapalabhati, it's through the nose, and you can try that in the second set. So you're going to inhale, and then you're going to rapidly exhale through your nose. As you exhale through your nose, you'll pull your abdomen in, and when the stomach releases, you'll, the lungs will automatically take in air through the nostrils. It's very subtle. I do find when I do it through the nose, I can feel my lungs moving more. Lick your lips, swallow a couple times. You want to lubricate your throat. Take an inhale through your nose and begin. Five, four, three, two, one, good for you, honor yourself. Give yourself a hug, high five, pat on the back, turn around. Savasana, you can close your eyes, open your arms and legs, take up as much or as little space as you want. And take a deep, life-giving breath into your nose and out to your nose. Good for you for showing up to class today, right? You showed up, you stepped onto your mat, you tried your best. There's times where maybe, um, you know, you wanted to do a little bit more, but it didn't feel right. You stopped yourself, good for you. There's times where maybe it was scary to do a little bit more and you pushed yourself, good for you. There's times where you just like maintained and cruised, good for you, right? It's all about just meeting yourself on your mat, wherever you are at any given moment, breathing in, breathing out, and all is coming. Keep it simple. <laughs> 